This is a topic that I learned about in uh, the Stanford Graduate School of Business when I did a, a mini MBA there. Uh, this is about the mission, values, and strategy of, a, uh, of an academic research group, but I'm going to use our group as the, uh, as the case study. Um, these are kind of terms that uh, I, before I started thinking about this stuff, really thought was like kind of MBA bullshit. Uh, but in fact, there is a reason why, uh, why big companies insist that they operate uh, using frameworks uh, such as strategy. Uh, and why they don't just do things just willy-nilly. I mean, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of focus in being able to outline these things. And I really think that more academic research groups should be thinking along the lines, should be thinking strategically and doing things, uh, things uh, uh, with, with somewhat more deliberate choice than is the median. And I think it's kind of important that grad students and postdocs and undergrads sort of know why we're doing what we're doing. So the uh, the mission is kind of what the mission statement is kind of what excuse me <coughs> mission statement is kind of this is my first um, daycare uh, <laughs> plague. <laughs> um, uh, the, the mission is kind of what the C-suite of a company goes out to like. Um, Breckenridge or whatever and sort of figures out and then they come back and they have this uh, this corporate thing and they tell everybody what the mission is but uh, do we have a mission I think we we do and uh, and it's to educate the our students to the highest standards in science and engineering to take and create high paying positions in industry government and academia and the group will achieve this goal by enabling students and postdocs to flourish personally and professionally. That's really the most important thing. Publishing innovative and useful studies and inventions consistent with the group's strategy. See uh, below in two slides, I'll talk about strategy. And demonstrating excellence in its core technical areas of molecular and nano engineered materials, photovoltaics, electronics with properties inspired by and which interface with biological tissue, and simple approaches to micro and nano manufacturing. Two products of this mission are to create technologies that reduce environmental degradation and improve human well-being, although there is some uh, overlap between those two goals. What are our values? Uh, this needs to be fun. Like, I think a lot of people go into grad school, uh, and forgive me, uh, undergrads and, uh, and postdocs who will be joining us later watching uh, on the internet, um, that, uh, that if this isn't fun, we shouldn't be here. Because there's no other reason why we're spending you know, four to six years uh, doing, uh, doing research um, if it, and not getting paid very much uh, if it didn't actually bring us some deep sense of satisfaction. This should be self-motivated too. Uh, there are some paradigms in grad school and some scientific fields which adhere to this more than others where the, the PI is kind of checking where your, uh, where your coat is <laughs> and to, to make sure that you're in lab at certain, at certain times and so forth. Uh, we value interdisciplinarity, so if it's just a group of people doing a, one very similar task, there's not really much, uh, there's, there's more value to be created in kind of the spaces in between traditional disciplines. Excellence. Uh, what a corporate uh, statement could be, could be complete without excellence? One should want to be the best at one does and not, uh, in our case, some other research group, take your pick, take your pick of a famous research group that has 50 postdocs, and, uh, and, uh, and, and we don't want to just be them light. We don't want to be just like a smaller, less successful version of some huge lab at a top five institution. We're trying to do something unique. Uh, a PhD should be a black belt in creating knowledge, so there are black belts in martial arts. This is not a black belt in something vocational or something that we, uh, just some, some 
skill set that we're trying to acquire, like learning how to use some instrument, but we're really trying to uh, develop mastery in the techniques of creating knowledge. So the purpose of our group is to teach people to generate ideas, select projects, create lasting impact, not to do work that is an extension of the PI's competence. Uh, so what are my first languages? Organic synthesis, nanofabrication, stretchable conjugated polymers, a little bit of OPV. We're doing stuff that's already way different and way beyond that, and that makes me really, really happy. Uh, so again, not to train uh, lab rats. So we're not just, the group's purpose is not just so that you can operate the contact angle goniometer better. We value reproducibility, mastery of the scientific method. So I have another talk on writing uh, that where I, I go into to details about why the scientific method is important. Um, this is something that we learn in fifth grade, but we usually forget it pretty <laughs> quickly, but actually it's really important to be deliberate in the way that we test, that we select hypotheses and test them. We uh, value giving credit to other researchers uh, and uh, in our own uh, lab and in labs over, across the, the whole world. We uh, value collaboration in every project, so pretty much everything we do is going to benefit by a close association with at least one or, one or more people. So outreach and engagement connects us to the community. We actually are a uh, part of a large public university that should, uh, that should be engaged with not just San Diego County, but also the, uh, also the, the, the country that, that provides 95% you know, of the funding that we get. Diversity in the lab, broadly interpreted, uh, produces better ideas. So it's really cool that we have people from, uh, from, from many different backgrounds, um, uh, not just uh, chemical engineer, not just uh, white male chemists from Hilton, New York, which is the town I'm from. Strategically, so uh, this is the part that's my, this is my, this was my favorite part of, uh, of my mini MBA program was the part on strategy. So strategy is really kind of a scientific statement of how a, uh, how a group can achieve success within its market. That is, in our case, not really a market, but a scientific community uh, and a regulatory context. And for us, that means funding environment. So why do we care about this? Well, the knowledge, knowledge of the organization's strategy permits coordination of decision making. So it's not just, just me that should know what the strategy is. It's really everybody. A strategy is a set of instructions, like you can think of tactical decisions. So individual decisions that kind of, that kind of create the broader strategy can be derived from the strategy, but it is different from the values or the mission. It's not always explicitly stated, but over, the, over time, I guarantee that not having a strategy is a losing strategy. And it's best to write it down. So strategy has four parts. One are the goals, and there's some uh, overlap with a mission statement in, in, in the goals part. The scope, this is really important, like what makes, uh, what are we gonna do? And importantly, where is, what are we going to do delineated that separates us from from what we are not going to do. The competitive advantage, which is one of my uh, least favorite business speak terms because I can't think of a single instance of an advantage that doesn't imply competition. So anyway, that's my bit of snark. And, uh, and logic. So logic is the self-sustainability of the strategy. So what is, what is the piece of the strategy that allows us to continue in a steady state with minimal amount of of, uh, of, of acceleration. Uh, so the strategy helps execute our mission using our values. So what are our goals? So we create and understand organic thin films whose rationally engineered molecular structure or nanostructure can be manipulated to produce a mechanical or electromechanical response for applications in energy, healthcare, and virtual touch. Well, I just covered all of science, right? <laughs> 
Not really. <laughs> I did cover everything that we're doing in the lab, but this is, uh, but, but one, one might get kind of the false impression that, uh, that this is much more than it actually is. So we will continue as an international leader. I really think that we have, um, that, 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 uh, that, that, you know, if you look at some of the citation counts of some of our key papers, I would, I would, I, I don't think it's a stretch to say this international leader in the mechanical properties of organic conductors, semiconductors, and stimuli responsive materials, and this is kind of a growing area. Not quite international leader yet, but maybe, maybe someday. The development of materials and devices exhibiting nanoscale or molecular scale elasticity and stimulus response. The intermediate area of application is to increase the mechanical stability of devices that are close to commercialization, i.e. roll-to-roll -roll fabricated OPVs, displays, RFID tags, etc., using molecular and nanoengineering. And the long-term area of application is in molecularly conformable optical and electronic devices for sensing, i.e. the Nano Islands projects and human interaction, i.e. in organic, uh, organic haptics. Uh, there's the, the molecular conformable optical and electronic devices, there should also be a, uh, a photovoltaics uh, parenthetical here just to include uh, everything. Second uh, part of the goals, so there's a new emphasis in the group on human subject research because basically there are no material science groups doing human subject testing and I think it's, um, uh, and, and I mean like materials, materials like molecular control, nanostructure control, but also IRB uh, uh, um, uh, approved human subject uh, uh, testing. I think this is actually a really blue ocean. Technology, so people might think that uh, commercialization or licensing is a goal. Uh, where appropriate, it is certainly within our, uh, within our interest to do so, but the creation of new knowledge is our principal concern. We don't want to get bogged down with IP stuff because if it ever happens that we can't present at a conference because there's some patent pending, uh, or some, some invention disclosure that hasn't been made that actually interferes with our primary goal of creating knowledge. In terms of individual goals, the golden ratio here is really one first author paper per year in a high impact journal. Students exiting the group should be able to obtain positions of leadership in industry, government, and academia. The goal throughout is the flourishing of members of the team, not increasing our number. So when, uh, when our um, postdoc Rachel arrives um, in two weeks, we'll be at 10 grad students and postdocs, and that is uh, as many as I think it is reasonable to, uh, to take on in a, uh, in a research group in academia. The scope, this is really important. Our scope is to be concerned with materials and devices that derive their properties from molecular structure or nanostructure that can be engineered deterministically, this is key, we'll get to that in a second, in principle or preferably by us using synthetic chemistry and nanofabrication. We're not, so scope, scope is this is what we are, scope is also what we are not doing. Not bulk and uh, isotropic materials, um, unstructured materials, random composites, colloidal particles, and so forth. To quote Seinfeld, not that there's anything wrong with these things, but this is not what we do. There has to be some determinism, some ability to molecularly engineer where this atom is, where this, uh, where this microstructure is. It has to be deterministic so that we can do structure property relationships. Um, now, this, there are some, uh, some gray areas here um, because is an atomic structure, is, is, a, is a crystal structure deterministic? Sort of, but that's a little bit too, that's a little bit too, uh, too uh, small a scale for, for us and what we mean by deterministic. What we don't do is chase records, and while figure of merit, figures of merit are important, there are significant opportunity costs. So if we worry too much about efficiency, sheet resistance, mobility, actuation time, and so forth, what are all the things that we're not doing? We're not 
finding the blue ocean between established fields. We're not going, taking the extra step to get, uh, get good human subject data and so forth. And really what figure of merit chasing uh, does is puts us in the same category as like the, the groups who get another tenth of a percent efficiency in their solar cell and get a nature paper. Now, nature papers are, are great, but I would rather not you folks spend a year optimizing every condition to get that extra tenth of a percent, because what's the, uh, what have we learned? Like, what have we, what have we, can, what dent have we made in the unknown by doing that kind of process optimization? So we, we make a lot of devices, but we don't make them for their own sake. There always has to be, we always have to be highlighting some material property. And uh, critically, we will not be second best by working in an area which is better done by some other group. So if there's another group that already has, uh, that has already basically done what we're doing, but instead of, uh, instead of using a conjugated polymer with a sulfur atom, we're gonna change it to an oxygen atom and just see what happens. That's not the, that or equivalent or not the, the approach that we're going to take. So what's the competitive advantage or just advantage of, uh, that, that we kind of enjoy? Um, I think our uniqueness is in our diversity in expertise and our vertical integration. Everyone kind of has a superpower. So this is sort of the Avengers or, or, uh, or X-Men uh, model and that is to say there is an excellence in, chosen, in their chosen, chosen specialty. So you have Storm and Jean Grey and Cyclops and, uh, and, uh, and together they can defeat Magneto. Nature is Magneto in this <laughs> <laughs> Nature, uh, yeah. <laughs> nature is who can summon the most powerful lightning bolt. Okay, the, we have a location, um, we have a core scientific area, this is our, part of our advantage, that is equally relevant to problems in energy, healthcare, consumer electronics, and military. That is electromechanical properties of deterministically structured thin films. We have a location in a really interdisciplinary department at a school with very minimal barriers to collaboration. So we now have uh, students that have come from, or have now or have had students that have come from pretty much every relevant department in the engineering school and also in the natural sciences, which is really cool. We have the ability to take, and I have the ability to sign on the top line of, uh, of, of PhD students in nanoengineering, chemical engineering, and Matt Sai and any other department with a co-chair. Uh, we have a good geographic location, <laughs> uh, and it's pretty, pretty serious consideration. <laughs> um, these issues tend to be invisible to people who haven't had things differently. Uh, I just want you to take a moment to appreciate these, uh, these, these things. The, we have an, so intersectional is a, is a big buzzword in, in business and, and social theory right now, and what does that mean when it applies to, uh, to us? So um, it's a little bit like having, you're multiplying a bunch of fractions, and you want to get the, the product to be as small as possible. So what if, uh, what if I'm like, an okay organic chemist. So maybe I'm one in three. Uh, so two people could do a better job than me. What if I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not quite so good at mechanics, let's say I'm one in two. Uh, my intermolecular forces is, uh, they're, be they're, they're better. Let's say I'm one in 80. And then if you just multiply all those denominators together, you end up actually being in quite a high percentile of something at the intersection between disciplines. So this is actually a, a strategy that one can take deliberately, and this is uh, not just academic research, but also, um, also industrial R&D and, and, uh, and business and even applying for a job. Like figure out 
what you're the best at in terms of the sort of consilience of all the things that you've done. And it's a good way to, uh, to position yourself because it automatically eliminates competition. So what's an alternative? So, so what's, what's the alternative is to study like pure microstructure, a group that purely st studies microstructure, pure synthesis, pure device engineering, pure mechanics. Um, so these are great things to do, uh, really important things to do. The world wouldn't move forward without doing that, but that's not what we're going to do. That's not what has actually made us uh, to, to, the, to the extent that we've been successful in the last seven years and change at UCSD. It is not because we've focused on one of these areas, because we haven't. So our people, we have, this is a, a huge advantage, diverse backgrounds and unusual backgrounds. I think this is really, this is really key. Uh, we have uh, our median grad student tends to be, uh, tends to be substantially older than, a, uh, than the median grad student in the median material science research group. I think that's, and people have had a lot of different types of work experience. Um, and I think this has all really helped us. A lot of, uh, a lot of people have come in more or less um, being, starting off more like postdocs than like, uh, than like PhD students. Um, maybe not completely, but certainly, you know, no one that has started in the lab has started as a typical first year grad student. I think that's a, a really big advantage for us. So how can these advantages be sustained? And that's where the logic comes in. So this is really the, 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 the core of, the, of, a, of an organization's strategy. So the logic, these are kind of the steps. Our team is composed of students who would be competitive at any program in the US and will continue to do so in the future. Our vertical integration, so this is the Avengers model, allows us to do many projects in-house. One or two key core grants enable our core activities while we seek unusual, larger, or collaborative opportunities. Success in our core area and service or engagement uh, to and with campus level centers like the Center for Wearable Sensors and the Sustainable Power and Energy Center will give us invitations to joint funding opportunities and new application areas. Attend attendance in industry conferences and participation in centers will make our research more relevant to industry where appropriate, although we are not an R&D arm of one of our member companies. We're always trying to be not, not at a like, uh, high technology readiness level, but rather doing fundamental work because it's better to have, it's better not to produce one product next year, but uh, 10,000 products in 20 years. So we're trying to create opportunities for corporate sponsored projects and make students better prepared for life after UCSD. Commercialization of technology where appropriate will create jobs, generate visibility, and generate unrestricted funds in the form of royalties. All of this visibility and support will produce better research, more support, and attract more of the best students. So that's kind of the circularity of this, of the, of the logic where we, uh, where this is the, the, the sustained, self-sustaining uh, self uh, aspect of the strategy.